If there is one dish that you will come across in most of the menu cards of Indian restaurants, it is biryani. Today I will show you how to make a perfect biryani. And if you follow this video step by step, I assure you that you will be making that restaurant quality biryani and I would say even better. Namaskar and welcome to Curries with Pumbi. And today it's all about the basics of making a perfect biryani every time. Let's start by marinating the chicken for which we need to make a ginger garlic paste. We need ginger, a good amount of garlic and a green chilli which is totally optional if you want to avoid the chilli heat. And my friends please make fresh ginger garlic paste for biryani instead of using those store bought ones. If you want to make a good biryani please use ingredients that are fresh. I added about a third of a cup of water to my blender jar and you need a smooth paste. If you see the paste is not fine enough, then add a little more water and blend to a smooth paste. Next coming to the biryani masala, I use Shan biryani masala. This is not a sponsored video, but I love the flavor of Shan biryani masala. I find the Shan Bombay biryani masala to be too spicy for me. So I use the one that says only biryani masala or sometimes pulao biryani masala. You can use any biryani masala of your choice and if you want to make your own I have a very oldie goldie video that I made a long long time ago the link to which is running on the YouTube card above. The Shan biryani masala has these whole spices in it. I like taking out these whole spices because it is very irritating if you bite onto a whole spice mixed with rice. What do you think I will do with these spices? Will throw these spices away? Oh no no no! Bumbi cannot waste something so precious. I put them in a tea strainer and I will tell you later what I will be doing with them. Coming to the marination. Here I have taken some plain unflavored yogurt and I have given all the ingredient proportions in the description box below the video so no worries. And then it is spice time. I added Kashmiri red chili powder. Please adjust the proportion of chili powder according to your preference because the biryani masala also has added chili powder in it. Then I added turmeric powder and little bit of ground coriander. I used 2 tablespoons of that biryani masala. You can go up to 3 tablespoons if you want to be very spicy. I also added a teaspoon of salt and a tablespoon of oil. Then stir everything very well to a smooth consistency. Here I have taken chicken with bones. I have used a combination of thighs and drumsticks. Please do not use boneless chicken and you want the pieces to be large. The yogurt spice mix goes in along with some chopped coriander leaves and a few mint leaves which I like tearing up like this. Suddenly it clicked in my mind that I forgot to add ginger garlic paste. But thank goodness I didn't forget it completely or else it would have been a disaster. Mix well and let it sit for 30 minutes to an hour. I usually do this marination step first and then move with the recipe. So by the time all prep work is done and the onions are fried, the chicken gets well marinated. Coming to the onions now which is an essential ingredient that goes into any biryani. Slice the onions not too thin nor too thick and try slicing them of more or less equal thickness so that they brown up all together at the same time. Now here comes the cheating part. I added a teaspoon of salt. The salt helps in taking out the moisture from the onions and this will lessen your time when browning them because the more water, the more time it will take to brown up. After applying salt, leave it for 10 to 15 minutes. I would also prep some saffron milk. I crushed a few strands of saffron in a mortar, added the crushed saffron to warm milk along with 2 teaspoons of Cura water. Please add a few drops if using Cura essence or you can also use rose water instead of Cura water. Here I have 2 tablespoons of water and I mixed just a pinch of yellow food color. Using food color is totally optional and I am telling you my friends I do not like using it but I am just showing you everything today that a restaurant does. 
to tell you the truth adding food color is such an unnecessary step but sometimes we are just so visually attracted to colorful things next coming to the rice you need good quality basmati rice you need to rinse the rice several times till the water runs clear my friends i cannot stress enough how important it is to wash the rice to get rid of the surface starch if you skip this step your rice will turn out to be sticky so when you see the water this clear it's good soak the rice for 30 minutes and after 30 minutes drain all that water please set a timer for 30 minutes or else the rice grains may break when cooked we will now start cooking for making biryani use a heavy bottomed wide pot you do not want to make a biryani in a karai nor you want to use something that is deep with a small diameter use a large wide pot so that the rice has enough space to fluff up and not get mushy oil goes in and my friends please don't be stingy with the oil when making biryani trust me my friends you do not want to deal with a dry biryani and today i'm making this for 8 to 9 servings coming to the onions see how much water has come out before adding to the oil squeeze out as much water as you can and then add them to the oil you do not want the oil to be too hot if your oil is too hot the onions will brown up as soon as they hit the hot oil and that's not how we brown onions in that way the onions won't taste sweet so the oil should be just warm to bring in that little sizzle to start with once you add all the onions now you can stir them on medium high heat come back to them frequently and give a stir when you start seeing them browning up a little bit along the edges lower the heat to medium and start stirring them continuously do not let go of your spoon because you want all the onion slices to brown up together you start seeing the color changing from a light golden to getting deeper but please do not wait for it to turn too dark chocolatey brown because that is inclining to getting bitter switch off the heat of your stove when it reaches this beautiful golden brown color and you have to be very fast here because the color gets deeper in the wink of an eye so my advice is not to wait till it gets too dark in color squeeze out the excess oil and place the browned onions on a plate lined with paper towels i am not bothered if a few strands choose to stay in the pot loosen them out immediately with a fork and then with another paper towel i like to press lightly on top to get rid of that excess oil okay heat back on medium and the marinated chicken goes in scrape out all that bowl goodness because you do not want to waste any of that i added two bay leaves and stirred the chicken on medium heat till the juices come up to a boil stir it from time to time on high heat for 10 minutes After 10 minutes it's time for Mr Potato to join the party. I know, I know, but please listen to me before typing in that comment. Addition of potatoes to a biryani may be unthinkable to many parts of India, but potatoes are very commonly used when it comes to the eastern part of India, especially West Bengal. So leave it out if that's how you like it. And I used raw potatoes. I also added half of those brown onions, a teaspoon of garam masala powder goes in, and then lid on and simmer it on low heat for 20 minutes. We will now cook the rice. Take a large pot of water for cooking your rice. The rice needs to swim in that water, and only then the grains will expand and become fluffier. And remember those spices that I took out from the biryani masala those go in now if you do not have a tea strainer you can also put the spices in a cheese cloth if your masala doesn't have those added whole spices please do add some green cardamom cinnamon stick and cloves i also added a heaped teaspoon of shahi jeera do not worry if you do not have shahi jeera i also added two dry bay leaves and allowed the water to come up to a boil The water is now boiling and if you are wondering why the water is looking yellow 
That's because of those spices that I took out from the biryani masala. Add a tablespoon of oil that prevents the rice grains from sticking to each other. Then a tablespoon of vinegar which prevents the rice from breaking and make them shiny. Take out the tea strainer. Add the rice. Then add about a tablespoon of salt. Do not worry my friends, it won't get overly salty because you will be draining all that water but a well seasoned rice is a key to a good biryani. Keep the heat high in the beginning. Once you see the water starting to bubble up, lower the heat to medium. If you keep the heat high all throughout, the rice grains will break. Give a stir with gentle hands from time to time. Soon after lowering the heat, start tasting the rice very frequently. I cannot specify the time because many factors come into play here. The only thing I trust is taste test. The rice needs to be 70% cooked. What does that mean? It means it should still be slightly chewy when you taste it, but not too chewy. So keep tasting very frequently. My rice is tasting perfect now. And see, if I press onto it, the grain is breaking, but it is not turning pasty even when I am pressing harder on it. Heat off, drain the rice, discard the bay leaves and with the help of a fork, gently spread out the rice. Remember my friends, we are not dealing with rocks here, but very delicate and elegant cooked basmati rice. Coming back to the chicken, 20 minutes done. The potatoes have become soft and the chicken is perfectly cooked. Do not wait for the chicken to fall off the bone as this will again get steamed with the rice. Then my camera's battery went down but what I did was skim off that oil from top and I will be using it. So chicken done, heat off and we will now layer the biryani. Add little bit of browned onions. Then loosely scatter the cooked rice on top. Please handle the rice carefully with gentle hands. Halfway, I added some chopped coriander and mint leaves. Then the rest of the rice. The rest of the chopped coriander and mint leaves go in. Sprinkle a tablespoon of the biryani masala. Store the rest of the masala in an airtight container in your fridge. Then the saffron milk mixed with kiura water goes in. I like to add some whole green chilies but it is totally optional. And now I will be using the oil that I skimmed off. You can use melted ghee but I like using this curry flavored oil. Next make little holes on the surface and add the food color in it. Do not add the food color all over the rice as you do not want all your rice to turn yellow. In this way there will be some grains of rice that are white and some light yellow from that saffron milk and some deep yellow from the food color. Sprinkle a tablespoon of lemon juice, rest of the brown onions and put a tight fitting lid on top. Remember my friends, the lid needs to be tight fitting or you can cover the pot with an aluminum foil and then put the lid on. Next I put a flame tamer on top of the burner and what this does is it prevents the curry that is sitting in the bottom from getting burnt. You can also use a cast iron pan or any flat pan here. Now switch on heat to high and keep it on high for 10 minutes. After 10 minutes lower the heat to the lowest level possible for 15 minutes. This method of cooking is known as cooking on dum. You can also do this in your oven on a very low heat setting. But first do the 10 minutes of high heat on the stove top and then transfer it to a low heat setting in the oven. After 15 minutes heat off and remove the pot from the burner. Allow it to rest for at least 30 minutes before you open the lid and let the residual heat do its final magic of fluffing up the rice. Please allow nobody to joyfully lift up that lid in this 30 minutes because that will be a disaster. The longer the rice sits, the fluffier it will get. So now it's time for me to reveal that moment of truth. Lid off 
and you will be greeted with this whole pot of something so delicious and so very pretty. Now there is even a technique to spoon out the biryani. Take a flat spoon and start loosening the rice from top and slowly working your way down. And see how some grains of rice are white, some are yellow and a few of them are deep yellow. And look at Mr. Potato. My goodness, do you still think adding potatoes is a bad idea? And the base of the pot is all clean with nothing sticking at the bottom. Some of you ask me how to cook perfect basmati rice. This is how you do my friends. It's fluffy, each grain is separate and this is how a perfect rice looks. You can debone the chicken if you please do before serving if you feel your guests will like it that way. But my friends, I am telling you, this is how a perfect biryani should look like and you will be so proud of yourself. Next coming up is a quick simple raita that goes best with this biryani. Bye bye.